Using clear glaze with your paints for a decorative finish can take things to a completely different level. I'm going to repaint this old cabinet that I've already painted with a decorative glaze and I'm going to do a whole different makeover with it. What I love about using clear glaze, it allows me to create what is called a faux texture. So it looks like texture, but it's not a texture to the touch. So I'm going to start with a new base color using Obison Blue chalk paint. Now because I already have a paint finish on this dresser, I'm probably only going to need one full coat. Once it's completely dry, then I can start with the clear glaze and I'll show you how I like to set it up. Clear glaze is just a medium that you add to mix with paint and what it does is it makes it more translucent and it changes the viscosity of the actual paint, giving it a more transparent appeal and allows you to create all kinds of fun faux finishes and decorative ideas. I even like to use my base coat as a textured finish by brushing the paint every which way. And to create more depth, I'm going to add this decoupage paper and I'm also going to use the colors within the decoupage paper. So with tintable glaze, it's making a ratio of glaze to paint. And I'm going to play around a little bit with that, but for this particular project, I did 50% glaze to 50% paint. All the supplies that I'm using, including the colors, will be in the description box below. Now that the base coat is completely dry, I can apply the decoupage paper before I start my decorative finish with using the glaze and paint. I'm just using the Mod Podge to adhere the decoupage paper and I like to work in small sections. This allows me to control the paper and smooth out any of the air bubbles as I go. And I find it really helpful to use that cling wrap to smooth down the paper so this way I don't tear it. When you're working with a large decoupage paper like I am, I also recommend to work in those small sections and not worry too too much about the air bubbles that are getting underneath. You can always go back once you've applied the entire decoupage, then you can keep going and smooth it all out using that cling wrap. Also working in those small sections allow for less actual creases and wrinkles as well. So I pulled out a few chalk paint colors like olive, cream, I also got some French linen and a little bit of en fleur and this is the Annie Sloan chalk paint palette collection but all I'm doing is grabbing a few of the colors that I see in the decoupage paper and mixing it 50% paint to 50% glaze and what I want to do is create a nice old world finish. I've learned in the past as I've made this mistake, it's probably good to let the decoupage paper and the Mod Podge glue dry before you make your cuts. This way you're less likely to grab the paper and shred it because the paper is moist. When I paint using the glaze and paint like this, you only need a little tiny bit, even for a dresser this size. So it's about two tablespoons of paint to two tablespoons of glaze. The clear glaze does not change the color of the paint. It just makes it more transparent. This makes for blending so much easier and you can create so many fun decorative finishes with it. Because I want to create textures with the glaze, I'm going to use a moist shop towel. As I go around and add in the glaze and paint, I'm just going to stipple it around and I'm going to use a variance of colors creating more highlights and lowlights all the way around that decoupage paper to make it more seamless. And you are using very little paint as you're doing this. So if you've made something a little too dark or a little too light, you can just always go back to the opposed color and go over top. It's really easy. So all I want to do first is pretty much just put on the glaze and create highlights and lowlights all around my decoupage paper. But I'm always going to be going back and adding a little bit more and taking away a little bit. So any areas that I've made it too light, I can grab the darker color and go right over top of it. Once I put the glaze on, I like to kind of just tap it out with the moist shop towel. 
This allows the transition of the colors to kind of come together. That's what the beautiful part about working with glaze. Because the overall transparency is now diluted with the glaze and its viscosity is much thicker than using a paint wash, this allows for a lot of freedom and playtime. And this particular Modern Masters glaze has a really long working time. It takes almost an hour for it to dry, so you've got plenty of time to play around with where you want your highlights and your lowlights. I always find shading with the colors I've chosen so much easier. Sometimes when you first put it on, it seems a bit bold, but as you keep tapping it out and using that shop towel, just to dab it out a little bit, it really pulls together very, very smoothly and the transitions of colors come together seamlessly. When I create an old world finish, I find that nothing is ever in a straight line when something has a very old world effect to it. It's generally very uneven. So that's really what I'm doing with my highlights and lowlights. I also noted there was a little tiny bit of red in the decoupage paper, so I'm going to actually amplify that with a little bit more red, just to give it a little bit more pop. The other beautiful thing about working with glaze mixed with paint, if you have added something and you don't like it, you could take another separate moist paper towel and you can actually just wipe it right off. Because its transparency is much thinner than a full concentrated paint, so again, it really makes correcting things a lot easier. But it's also just fun to play. You can really play around with different color tones. And again, if you don't like it, it's not a problem. You've got a really good working open time with glaze. So you can either leave it and you can paint over it with another glaze color. So again, it's got a lot of versatility and a lot of movement to play around with. I used to use Benjamin Moore's clear glaze, but it looks like they've discontinued manufacturing it. But there is general finishes and there's the Modern Masters and I'm also on the hunt for other brands that also carry the clear glaze. This is also a great way to use similar to a color wash, just to maybe down or soften a very bright color. Anytime I'm working with paints, even with a paint and glaze mix, it's always really good to stand back, let everything dry, and then you can reassess because the paint colors themselves will change a little bit, whether it's just full concentrated paint or a paint and glaze mix. And this will help determine if you want to create more highlights and lowlights. I definitely will be sharing more glazing ideas with you. Hear the birds and see the sun Side by side our fears are done All the good times just begun Oh, we know what we have, let's hold on tight Found what we're looking for in life Call us crazy, but things are finally right With you and I, the future is bright So I've had this desk lamp for a long time and it's got a square lamp shade to it but it's actually got a few knocks in it and a few actual dings into it now. It's probably close to 10 years old so I thought I could recycle this by adding a few decorative ideas.
I really want to practice how to decoupage fabric and I figured this lamp shade would be perfect considering it is a fabric and it is quite stiff and because it's a perfect square I'm just going to cut out some templates of the decoupage paper that I chose for this project and see how decoupaging the actual fabric feels and how it works. I cut the actual decoupage pieces so it would sit inside the actual black trim of the lampshade itself. So I ended up cutting out four exact pieces for all four sides. And just like other decoupage that I've done in the past, I'm just going to use the Mod Podge as well as the cling wrap to help smooth any of the creases and or air bubbles. Because the fabric is actually absorbing the Mod Podge quite quickly, I'm going to make sure I've got a really good liberal amount on before I add the actual paper. And even though I'm using a fabric to decoupage, using the cling wrap really, really helpful because this way I don't actually tear the decoupage paper. I can just smooth it all out. And again, just go over it several times and just be patient with it. It turns out beautifully. I've been so excited to tell you that we got another puppy and they were just born a few days ago. So I wanted to share a clip of them. They are so adorable and we are looking forward to picking one and I'm gonna share all the details with you soon. How sweet are these little faces? A wonderful way to practice using glaze techniques is on a small project like this little tiny wood keepsake box. I even have some leftover scrap decoupage paper. So using the exact same glaze and colors that I used in the first project of the video, I'm just gonna paint up this little wood box with plain white chalk paint. I will use this color as my base color before I start my glaze. Because chalk paint is so thick, it absorbs the glaze and the glaze colors so well. Once all the paint is completely dry, then I'll cut the exact sizes I need to do the top and the two sides of this box just with the decoupage leftover pieces I have. Again, just going to use that Mod Podge and again, because the chalk paint's so thick, sometimes you need to add a little extra of the Mod Podge because the actual glue is going to absorb into the paint. Then use a little bit of that cling wrap to smooth out your decoupage. This again will prevent it from shredding or tearing. Even to pick up thrifted little finds to go ahead and put paint on, you could do the exact same process as I'm doing here to just practice using colored glazes. With that little bit of practice and playtime, you will be a pro at working with the glazes and you will want to dive into all kinds of fun other projects, including your furniture. So to get a nice clean edge when I'm working with decoupage, I love to use a little bit of that sandpaper and just go around and make sure I've got any of the loose ends off. Once I have all the decoupage completed, I will actually seal the decoupage with the Mod Podge on top and that will keep everything secured. Before you go and cut any openings for anything that you're going to decoupage, even drawers, it's really important to make sure that your decoupage is completely dry, so this way the paper doesn't shred on you as well. Anytime I'm going to try working with new techniques or new mediums, finding these smaller little projects are perfect. So the colors I have are a French linen, the Obison blue, and a cream color. And I'm just gonna go around just like I did on the furniture and just play with highlights and lowlights. And I'm using a damp cloth to go around and make textures as well with that colored glaze. You can also use this on top of the decoupage papers and this will give it a really fun kind of faded old world effect. The more you just keep playing with it, the more you're going to understand the feeling and how the effects will turn out. And if you don't like what you've done, you can always go back and just start with the base color and paint over everything and start over again. But that's part of the learning process. And it's actually what's 
the fun part as well. Now this particular little box had some hardware that I just ran the paint over rather than removing. So I'll go back and actually put some gilding wax onto that just to highlight it so it's more of a metal look as well. But it always amazes me just with using the glaze and paint mixes, how beautiful and seamlessly the colors can come into each other. And I can create some really fun highlights and lowlights to any of the projects that I work on with colored glaze. Again, all the products will be in the description box below. Gilding wax is superb for painting over any hardware. So if you've already used a paint over it rather than removing it, this is a great option to go ahead and give it that metal look. You have from silver, vintage gold, and you even have copper choices available. Thank you so much for watching this week's video and I'm really looking forward to seeing you soon. Until then, take care.